way the weather looks. I mean, if we left this camp in place and then it dumped like, you know, two meters of snow until Sunday, like we'd be kind of hosed. So what we're facing now is a potential cyclone coming our way <laughs> straight from Gulmark. And which is not a good news because uh, probably that's gonna close the mountain for skiing and at the same time close the sky for flying back home. The main thing I'm concerned about is the horses being able to get up here. The village who could help carry like personal bags out? Yeah. Usually finding for porters rurally is not really an option at all. Gotcha. If you made the call Monday night, the horses could mobilize Tuesday morning to be here Tuesday night. So realistically, we probably wouldn't get out to Wednesday. If we have meters of snow okay, here, even if it settles out, I think the horses would be open. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, can you come tomorrow, horses? Next day? After tomorrow, you eat them. Tuesday. Hello? The horses can't come tomorrow. God bless you, like tomorrow. I'm Luke Smithwick. Uh, uh, skier, climber in the Himalayas. I got into skiing in the Himalayas in 2012. It was the first ski expedition on Shishapangma uh, in Tibet. Over the years since then, I was working in Kashmir for the government, uh, working on ski development there and snow safety. And I just came to realize that there's just so much variety and opportunity for skiing all across the Himalaya range. And that brought me into exploring the range more for uh, the different types of skiing you can do throughout the whole year. My name is Vlad, Bodysław well, from Polish. First time I traveled with Luke was around two years ago. We met in the uh, eastern part of India, bordering with Tibet, and we did some exploratory climbing in, in Pangong area. When I realized that he spent so much time in Alaska and he's a good skier, I thought that's going to be a good opportunity to ski together in some wild regions. Uh, it's a pretty uh, lengthy trip to get out here from Kathmandu. We had to fly all the way across Nepal on a jet to the Terai, the agricultural area along the southern edge of Nepal. the unlimited possibilities of the aircraft of Nepal. This flight is definitely the part of the trip that I'm the most nervous about. How was the flight? It was worse than I thought it would be. I was feeling positive this morning and uh, 
I was a little scared when I realized how close we were to the mountains. <laughs> Pema is the cook. Okay. Yeah, Pema. This is uh, Pema as well. My name is Pema Lama. Pema Lama. Pema, Pema. <laughs> he is the horseman. Okay. And this is Jutinder Shai. Uh, he's a local man, local guide. So he's coming with us too. Namaste. We moved on flying to Simikot, which is a small, really cute village on the side of the hill around 3,000 meters above the sea. Surprisingly, it was very well maintained. Not very big, but very lively. Some stores, uh, lodge or place where uh, tourists could stay, although there are not many tourists visiting this part of Nepal. A nice place. start over here in these mountains and uh, see what we see. Lots of mud, especially now when there is a little bit of snow, and uh, on the other hand, there are also the warm parts of the day, so everything is melting. <laughs> Together with our porters and horses, we moved to the uh, village of Siada. Guys, smile a bit. Can you smile? Like this? <laughs> no? I just have like the chills and this like chest cough um, and I feel like super fatigued but I think I just have like a like a, a gnarly little cold maybe like a slight fever or something 
and then uh, <laughs> just like being at altitude and the like cold and wet is kind of exacerbating it. We're going up today around three, four hours hike until we reach a spot which is inaccessible by the horses where we will build another camp from where we're going to start exploring on skis tomorrow. I think there was a snowfall during the night, so the conditions should be great tomorrow. base camp at 3200 meters we just started setting it up so that's where we're going to have the kitchen tent that's where the local boys are helping us to build the dining tent and we have five other tents around the area is really nice kind of covered from the wind this is a really nice spot to camp because there's these nice flat terraces with the really soft dirt so I sleep very well tonight. Yeah, we just moved up from the village of Siada. And this is the terrain we're gonna be riding over the next uh, week and a half or so. And uh, it looks really good. there into the Alpine and take a look at the snowpack and have a nice day in some pretty amazing mountains. It's been a long time without skiing. So it's been a pretty long trip to get here and finally today is like the first day we get to ski. So I'm pretty excited, got blue skies, looks like a nice day. Taking a little rest day, you know, getting up to camp was a little bit of a challenge because um, I have a continuous stream of phlegm coming out of my mouth uh, and a pretty gnarly cough. Plus now I'm on a shitload of antibiotics. Um, but hopefully the rest day will get me right and then I can go skiing tomorrow. have a pretty lengthy approach here. The horses can only go so far, there's deep snow. We tour up to uh, the Alpine, which takes some time. Cars and ramps and faces and many things to ski when the conditions are right. You can look and see on Google Earth the terrain out here, but to get up close and really see it and see the potential and uh, look a little bit further over the next ridge behind the range and just see how vast it is for skiing in here. It's quite a different world out here. 
and out here it's completely wild. Yeah, camera's Yay! loaded with snow now. Fuck. It's all right. Fuck. Yeah, buddy. Ah, fuck. For the first day we went up and skied on a 4,000 meter peak. Uh, we found good snow. Uh, we found relative stability and we chose terrain that we all came here to ski. You can go on the different shapes of terrain from many uh, sides. It's, it's really fun. And the higher up you go, the more uh, big lines you, you can make, uh, the, the more open terrain you have and the steeper it gets. The skiing is, is beyond what I imagined. I came in like slightly nervous that the ski terrain would be pretty pretty steep and very intimidating you just get up there and there's so many options how did you discover this spot uh this was just by happenstance i knew that storms from kashmir in india tracked into this northwest corner of nepal um, i saw great terrain uh, with research and i knew that there's potential for skiing here. Oh, the group is really cool. Uh, what surprised me is that we're mostly the split border, so only me and Luke are on the skis. The rest of us is on the snowboards, uh, but it doesn't make any difference. We are a good group. We have pretty much the same pace, all of us, and the skills of all of us are really good. <laughs> what is it about? Huh? <laughs> okay. Got back from skiing yesterday and then just started feeling like total crap. Um, I thought it was just tiredness and then went to bed and then started getting the chills, barely slept. Um, I think I'm coming down with something. Some people do have colds and there is one person with like a, a chest cough, which is common on Himalayan expeditions. It happens because people's bodies are stressed from altitude, from travel, from their body going through a lot to approach these areas and go out and be eating different food and living a different lifestyle and from home. I'm gonna to take today off, maybe tomorrow off until I feel better, but I guess this is expedition life. Just adjusting to how different it is here. Uh, different food, a uh, different way of life, just being out in a place that's uh, truly exploratory. It's an eye opener, I think, for people and also it can be challenging.
It's uh, first day of March 2020 and uh, we have a snowstorm coming in today and once it clears uh, forecasted for tomorrow we're gonna go up and try to ski some lines out here in these big peaks up above. So what we're facing now is a potential cyclone coming our way <laughs> straight from Gulmark. And which is not a good news because uh, probably that's gonna close the mountain for skiing and at the same time close the sky for flying back home. I mean if we let this camp in place and then it dump like you know two meters of snow until Sunday, I think we'd be kinda hosed. Can you call Pema? Please. Okay. This tower is working. Maybe tomorrow no tower. It's no problem. It's no problem. The main thing I'm concerned about is the horses being able to get up. The village, you could help carry, like, personal bags out. Yeah. Usually finding for orders really is not really an option. Okay. Can you come tomorrow, horses? Tomorrow. Next day? After, after tomorrow, you will eat them. Tuesday. Hello? The horses can't come tomorrow? Not possible tomorrow. Tuesday evening. Tuesday evening, yeah. There's a lot of snow coming. So it's the day after the storm, I'm feeling a little bit shit again but today it's just a big powder day so I kind of feel I have to go out so I'm going to push through, see what the day brings, some pretty sweet looking snow, blue skies, let's see we're just pushing through the approach again, this long pain in the ass approach up to the alpine, um, hopefully we'll get some really nice turns up above, some Himalayan powder. This time of year we're powder skiing and skiing peaks around 4,000 to 5,000 meters. And then as the weather changes and the snowpack becomes more stable, we go up higher and ski up to 6,000 meters all the way up to 8,000 meters. So you can ski here year round in the Himalayas. Western Nepal and we're making some observations of the snow. This is a snow pit and this is an extended column test. And uh, extended column tests are a lot like uh, <clears throat> nothing else. Nothing. Well, a bit of a disappointing moment now. Um, been skinning up and I just can't shake off this illness. I'm feeling so, so crap. So 
managed to get to like 3,900, 4,000 meters. And I just can't go any further. So the rest of the group are gonna try and skin up that ridge behind me up to the top there and ski down off another direction. I'm gonna ski down on my own. I mean, don't feel great about that, but on the plus side, here I am in the Himalayas on my own, about to do a fresh powder run with no other tracks. Yesterday I was feeling pretty crap um, with headache and just general weakness, so I didn't go up and ski yesterday. I thought I'd feel a little bit better today, but didn't sleep so well last night and uh, decided to give it a miss again today, so hopefully I can uh, feel better. I think I'm just having problems with hydration. Um, it's just a catch-up game. I'm trying to play with staying hydrated and getting enough sleep, and I feel I'm able to sleep better during the day than I am at night, uh, getting the chills at night. But uh, hopefully today I can just sit here and just rehydrate as much as possible, and um, hopefully feel better. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good well, the support team, it's, uh, it's a funny topic because uh, yesterday we had some drama. Uh, one of the porters, we thought that he is kind of sick and uh, some of us are not feeling very well too. He's uh, sometimes sometime, sometime he's happy. <laughs> sometimes he's not problem, only a day, just inside a day. Okay. He's no problem. Mm -hmm. The is good. Uh, we are a bit more sensitive to the local flora and fauna, bacteria and so on, so we were a bit scared that they can contaminate us with something. So it's the last day of skiing today and uh, I haven't managed to recover and uh, everyone's just headed up. Pretty jealous. Just haven't managed to shake off this sickness. That's it, that's it, trip over. Just sit here at the camp for another day and then head back to Simicot tomorrow and see if I can get a flight out. Bit of a bummer to the end of the trip, but I mean, it's pretty special being up here in the mountains. Two pretty, pretty 
pretty nice days of skiing in nevertheless in some pretty unexplored places and some big peaks but <sighs> sickness just got the better of me. It's just one of many spots around this area uh, that are just waiting to be discovered for ski. To come out here and look at it as a skier is, is something unique and fairly new.